Hello guys, Oscar Hotel 8, Sierra Tango November here from Survival Tech Nord. Today we're going to be talking about moving away from the Raspberry Pi for off-grid communications, emergency communications, and preparedness. This is going to be a tough video to make, so I'll just go ahead and jump right in. If you stick with me, I'll tell you all about it. You are listening to the emergency broadcast systems. This station broadcasts emergency news and official information on the air for a sign area. I once heard Elon Musk say, if your rate of innovation is fast enough, the copycats will be copying what you did years ago. And although it's understandably frustrating, we do have a culture of continuing to move forward on this channel. That's what this video is all about. Now, to be totally fair, we've built some pretty incredible Raspberry Pis on the channel. The goal was always to augment our radios, radios like the Yaesu FT817 and 818, or the Yaesu FT891, or Zygu X5105, or G90. And actually, any radio where audio facilities weren't present for data communications. Now, this worked incredibly well, especially because the Raspberry Pi was so cheap. That was its main benefit. Where it fails, especially from an off-grid perspective, is its configuration complexity, the number of additional peripherals required to get it up and running reliably when off-grid, and its poor reliability in comparison to Linux, Windows, or Mac OS boxes. Now, this doesn't mean we haven't had our successes. We certainly have. However, what we don't want to do with emergency communications, with preparedness, with off-grid communications, is start tinkering with a Raspberry Pi when we're out in the field. So rather than focusing on the cost savings of the Raspberry Pi, I've shifted my focus to reliability. The general idea here is to remove as many points of failure from our computer systems as possible. With the Raspberry Pi, I needed an enclosure, I needed a real-time clock, I needed an external keyboard and perhaps an Android phone or tablet to access the Raspberry Pi. I needed to come up with some way to power the Raspberry Pi in the field. And finally, I needed to solve the problem of data or storage reliability, since the SD cards were unreliable at best. All this without the Raspberry Pi becoming as expensive as some other PC or tablet. So let's go ahead and look at the alternative I've come up with for field communications. So what you see at the top left of the screen is the current configuration of my Raspberry Pi 4. It's got power management and a real-time clock. It also syncs the time for the Raspberry Pi and the real-time clock from a GPS. Now there's absolutely nothing wrong with this Raspberry Pi if we're not using it with Winlink and Vada HF and as long as we're using it as a standalone system connected to the internet. Now when reliability becomes more important than cost, we really have to start looking elsewhere for solutions. So for field communications, I've replaced the Raspberry Pi with the Microsoft Surface Go 2. Now more than likely, for about half a year now on the channel, you've seen me using it with the ICOM IC705. We can use it with other radios, but it's going to be a wired connection between the Surface Go's USB-C connection and the radio and audio interface. So let's go ahead and take a look at some of the benefits we gain by using a Microsoft Surface or some other Windows-based laptop or tablet. We can imagine the most notable difference between a Raspberry Pi configuration and operating with a Microsoft Surface is a reduction in station complexity and components. For this configuration, I'm using the ICOM IC705. When pairing the 705 with the Microsoft Surface, we have the radio, we have the Microsoft Surface itself, and either a wired or wireless connection between them. That's it. That's the entire station. When combining the Microsoft Surface with other radios, for example, the Lab 599TX500, or with other radios like the Zygu X5105, in these cases we use a DigiRig Mobile for connectivity between CAD control and the audio ports on the radio, and a single wire USB interface to the Surface Go 2. 
That's just a single USB cable between the radio and the tablet. But we're not only talking about hardware benefits, we also have software benefits with the Surface over the Raspberry Pi. Now the most serious deal breakers are Pat Winlink and our reliance on RDOP for HF communications. Now it's actually quite unfortunate, but RDOP actually suffers during poor band conditions or weak signal work. Moreover, Pat Winlink, although it's a huge step forward for the Raspberry Pi and Linux operating systems, it still lacks many of the basic features we expect from Winlink Express on Windows. So if you're running a low power station with Winlink for emergency communications, you definitely want to be using VADA HF with Winlink Express. Unfortunately, there is no simple and reliable way to run VADA HF and Winlink Express on a Raspberry Pi. Now, even in the best case scenario, the Raspberry Pi creates almost as many problems as it solves. Here we have a Raspberry Pi 4 with an Android smartphone. We have the iCom IC705 and of course a power supply to power it all. Now, by all measures, this is an incredibly clean installation. It's also one which I'm happy to utilize at home or on the grid. When we take the Raspberry Pi off grid or in the field, naturally we have our radio, we have an audio interface if required, and we also have cat control and all the cables. Now the Raspberry Pi still needs a real time clock or a GPS to manage the time. It needs a 5 volt power supply, heat sinks if we're using the Raspberry Pi 4 and doing a lot of data decoding. And still, we'll need a screen, mouse, and keyboard, or an Android tablet or smartphone to interact with the Raspberry Pi. Now again, I'm not saying this doesn't work. We've used it successfully for a few years already. But look at the complexity. Look at how difficult it is to configure. At some point, we have to ask ourselves if fiddling with the Raspberry Pi is our goal, or if focusing on communications should be our singular objective. Now, it's definitely fun building and configuring a Raspberry Pi for field communications, but I don't want to bet my life on the reliability of that Raspberry Pi. Now, we don't want to just crap all over the Raspberry Pi because there certainly are circumstances where the Raspberry Pi is a magnificent solution. For me, that's on the desktop at home when I'm using big antennas with lots of gain the Raspberry Pi is connected to the internet, so it doesn't require a GPS or real-time clock or any of those components. And finally, RDOP can make the best use of the more efficient home antennas, giving RDOP a helping hand to reach out to those RMS gateways in the region. Now, when the Raspberry Pi is coupled with an ICOM IC705, we really get a clean installation on the desktop. This is a critically important point if we're going to be using our Raspberry Pi at home versus in the field. Now, to be fair, perhaps we can even delegate the Raspberry Pi to backup field computer status while utilizing more traditional computers like the Microsoft Surface Go 2 as our primary field computers. In any event, we don't need to say goodbye to the Raspberry Pi. We just need to utilize it where it's best suited. Now, don't be too worried about specifically using the Microsoft Surface Go 2. Laptops and tablets from other manufacturers can work just as well. The only reason you see so much emphasis placed on the Microsoft Surface Go 2 in this video is because it's the one I chose to replace my Raspberry Pi in the field. So what you're seeing now in the upper left hand corner of your screen is my Android tablet, the iCom IC705, and of course the Raspberry Pi. What we see in the lower left, lower right, and upper right sides of the screen are the iCom IC705 with the Surface, the TX500 with the Surface, and the X5105 with the Surface. With the ICOM IC705 in the Surface, there's simply one USB cable between the radio and the tablet. 
that can also be set up wirelessly if you desire doing so. For the TX500, Yaesu FT818 and the Zygu X5105, we have the DigiRig Mobile creating the audio and cat control facilities with a one-wire interface back to the surface. So we've removed the intermediate computer, the Raspberry Pi, from the equation. There's simply our computer, our radio, and the Diggy Rig for audio and cat control. Now one other thing I can do with the Surface, which I haven't been able to achieve on a Raspberry Pi with any great success, is running multiple radios with multiple pieces of software simultaneously. At least not without some lag or losing frames in one application or the other. Unfortunately, the Raspberry Pi lacks sufficient CPU power to carry out this task. Still, with my experience, the Raspberry Pi 4, which is my preferred model, is very good at doing one thing at a time and doing that extremely well. Now let's talk about choosing a machine to replace our Raspberry Pi. First and foremost, we want to find a machine which has USB-C power delivery or 12 volt charging. It's an extremely big no-no to use an inverter to convert something from DC to AC, then back to DC again. It's inefficient, so let's simply not do it. No proprietary voltage requirements for our laptops or tablets. We can work very well with USB-C power delivery or 12 volts. Next, we'd like to focus on finding a machine which gets at least 5 hours runtime on its internal battery. The reason for this is rapid deployment, low power communications. We want to be able to deploy our tablet or laptop and radio without having to deploy an external power supply. Next, let's ensure we get a 400 nit or better daylight readable display. We want to ensure we can read the laptop or tablet during daylight when we're out in the field. Next, let's avoid any spinning hard drives from back in the day. Make sure that your laptop or tablet utilizes solid state disks simply because they're more robust and more energy efficient. Next, if at all possible, find a machine with a built-in GPS. For WinLink, we can utilize the inbuilt GPS to send out position reports to the network. For modes like JS8 Call and FT8, we can utilize an inbuilt GPS to synchronize the sequence, start, and stop times. Next, let's talk about the display. I should have mentioned this earlier, but it's important to get yourself a 1920 by 1080 display at the minimum. Low resolution displays often contribute to operator fatigue. The better screen you have, the easier it is for your eyes to stare at it for long periods of time. We can skimp on other aspects of our machines, but definitely not on the display. Finally, don't be afraid to look for a used machine during your search. Lots of operators are asking about the Surface Go 2 because it's not at all a very good gaming tablet or laptop. So as a gaming machine, its reviews are pretty poor. As a machine used for amateur radio data modes like WinLink, JS8 Call, JTDX, FT8, whatever, it's actually extremely well suited. Now the point here isn't to make you go out and buy a Microsoft Surface Go 2. The point is to show you a machine with relatively low specs, which is more than adequate for amateur radio applications. So you can compare the specs of the Microsoft Surface Go 2 or the Microsoft Surface Go 3 to other machines that you're considering buying. If nothing else, we can use the specs of my machine as a baseline. Alright guys, it's time to start closing down this video, but I don't want you to click away just yet. For those of you interested in how I set up my Microsoft Surface Go 2 for field communications, I'll leave a link to a blog post I recently published on oh8stn.org. I'm pretty sure I covered every aspect of setting up the Microsoft Surface Go 2, including how to set it up for off-grid work and the applications I've installed on the machine. So please, 
check out the link in the description for that blog post. For the rest of you who may be interested in how I finally arrived at my Raspberry Pi setup, there's a video I published some time ago called The Ultimate Raspberry Pi Build. I'll leave a link to that also in the description. Now finally, and this is sort of a rant, but um, here you go. The reason we're stuck with Windows machines, or the reason we're stuck where we have been for quite some time, is because the amateur radio community doesn't levy mobile operating systems like Android. Even if that means we have to start paying developers to come up with these clients for mobile operating systems. There's no reason we don't have a JTDX for Android or a JS8 call for Android or even a basic WinLink client for Android, all capable of HF communications. There's simply no reason. Until those applications exist, I suppose this is the next best thing. All right, guys. If you like what I'm doing, if you like the content I'm creating, please leave me a comment or even a thumbs up to let me know. And if it's not too much to ask, please share this video with someone or someplace where other operators might enjoy it. Rock and roll, guys. Thanks for watching. Ciao.